All right, the best thing that you as a homeowner can do to keep me away is to clean this outdoor condenser coil on the outside of your house. Actually, I would say the first thing that you can do is normal air filter changes, which I'm assuming all you guys know how to do. This is your condensing unit on the outside of the house. This contains the compressor. This is what runs your air conditioning. And this is what compresses the gas and basically transfers the heat from the inside of your house to the outdoors through the refrigeration process. So just think of this as a giant radiator on the outside of your house. That's why when you put your hand over it, it's hot and the air is blowing out warm. So we need to make sure that we clean these coils. Now there's usually gonna be about three different types of coils you're gonna find. Standard thin coil like this, which more or less looks like the radiator on your car. Something that you're, you're, you, you think of seeing which looks like this up close. You'll also have a micro fin coil, which is a little bit different. Looks like this. Or a spike fin coil, which looks like this. Now the easiest of those to clean is going to be this standard type of coil. The microfin coil, you're going to need a special cleaner for that than what I show. I'll, I'll show you a picture of it um, and we'll go over that when we get to it. The spike fin coils are a little bit more of a pain in the butt because they have no fins, it's just a giant spike. But the ideas and premise are the same. Now you can see my condenser coil just has this wire guard on it. Sometimes you go to a unit that looks, say, like something like this. So you'll see that that unit had a giant louvered guard over it. That louvered guard, depending on the type of unit, can, it comes off. Now whether you have to take all the screws off the top here, lift the fan up and pull it out, or whether it's a nicer unit where each individual panel comes off, they'll be able to come off. And you're gonna to wanna to do that because you gotta make sure that those louvers are clean in addition to the coil. It's one of the reasons why I never like those units. They're a lot more protected than this, good for like golf courses and stuff like that, but they're a pain in the butt to clean. So the first thing we wanna do before we even start to clean this is to locate our power, which for me comes in right up here. You'll have three standard types of disconnects. You'll have a lever action one like this, You'll have a one that just has a door. You open it up and it has a little T-handle that you will pull out. And then the third one will have a door over it and then you flip it up and it has what looks like a breaker in it. If you're confused as to where to find it or you can't find it, see this width, this line right here? Follow it from your condensing unit out and you'll be able to see where it is. So just go right to it. You don't have to do anything on the inside. You shut it, even if it's running, just shut it off. All right, so now as far as cleaner goes, oh, what I'm using is this right here. New Bright Condenser Coil Cleaner, it's the blue stuff. And there is a mixing chart on the back of the gallon, right there. Sorry about the lighting, but I'm kind of half in the shade, half in the sun. Um, you can do light soil or medium soil is fine. Mine is set in a spray bottle for heavy because I use it at work. All right, so you want to mix it in a spray bottle like so. Now you can use this on all condensing units except for the microfin coils. Reason being is those microfin coils are 100% aluminum. This can eat through aluminum. These are still aluminum, but it's only the fins here. Let me pan you down. It's only the fins that are aluminum. There's actually copper tubing underneath that. Not so with those microfin coils. Microfin coils have a special cleaner. It looks like this. Another thing you can do with the microfin coil, since you're not going to have grease on your home air conditioner, is use something very that's uh, okay to use on aluminum. You can even use a mixture of dish soap, just something to break the surface tension to be able to get the grime off. All right, this stuff will go in there and actually foam out and push the the grime out. Now. This is only one bend of coils wrapped around the inside, so we can go from the outside in and clean this perfectly fine. We're not worried about getting anything wet on the inside as long as we don't spray directly into that fan motor, 
we're going to be fine. We don't worry about the, getting the compressor wet. It's going to get wet anyway when it rains. So, you don't need any of those kinds of contraptions that you see on TV where they go in through the, the fan blade to try to push all the stuff on the outside. Spike fin coils are a little bit different. Usually with those, I'll have to get on both sides because the spike fin, when you push stuff through one way, it gets caught and you have to go back and forth between them. But the premise and idea are the same. So, first thing you do is just take a regular guard hose. Put on a light mist. It's wet that entire coil down. Just like that. And what I like to do is kind of section it off into three or four sections so well I'll, in this case I'll probably do three so one section two sections three sections so just take your coil cleaner it down and let it sit for a second and you can see that it's foaming up and pushing all the pollen and everything that was caught in those coils it's pushing it out and I'll get a closer view of that okay here you can see how that coil clean is foaming and pushing a lot of the stuff out from the inside Okay, so now you do not want to let this dry on the coil and you want to give it like 30 seconds to a minute to foam up like that and then just rinse it off. With your hose going at about a 45 degree angle, that'll push the stuff in and out. All right, just rinse the whole thing off. Again, we're not worried about getting water on the inside as long as we don't spray into this fan motor. There's also an electrical section in the back which is pretty easy to avoid just as long as you're not spraying directly into that. You're perfectly fine. And that's it. So let me do the other side and I'll show you what's happening on the inside of this coil. Okay, I know this is a little, maybe a little hard to see, but as I'm rinsing through, you can see the water is going right through the coil. Okay? That's what we want. Where the water can go, the air can go. So basically we're cleaning off everything in between those coils so that we have nice airflow through everything. Okay, it's as simple as that. Shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes to do uh, if you don't have to unscrew anything. Could take you up to maybe about a half an hour to do if you have to take off a lot of guards. Uh, so, if your unit was running before you shut it off, let it sit for about 15 minutes. That'll make sure that the pressures are nice and equalized and it can start easier and also give it a chance to drip dry. The other thing you want to double check while you're over here is just look down inside and at the bottom, if there is a lot of crud in there, like leaves, you'll want to take off the uh, the fan reach in there and scoop that out reason being is there are drains drain holes in the bottom of this which is also another reason why you want it on a solid pad of some sort so the water can drain out and it doesn't build up and rot out the inside or rot out the bottom of the compressor uh, the other thing you can do while you're here too is if you have a unit that is higher than the it, say your air handler is higher than the condensing unit you're going to have some sort of gravity fed drain Usually, they follow the line sets out. Find those and just stick a quick vacuum to them and clean them out. In my case, when they installed this, they did something relatively smart. Where you can see, if I can get the angle right, right up there, if it focuses. You can see a drain line on the outside of my gutter. Well, the main drain line actually drains into my gutter 
and then comes down this downspout and I'll be able to see the water coming out. Now that one up there is a secondary drain. So if the primary drain clogs, water's going to start coming out of that secondary drain and then instead of just going into the same place as the primary drain, that's going to drain out onto this awning and drip onto my stairs and let me know that I have a problem. So in my case, it's kind of hard to clean out my drains because I got to get a ladder and go into the gutter or I got to go into the attic. But uh, I do that once a year. You should only have to do it that much. As far as cleaning the coil, depends on how long you're running it during the year, what your climate is. In our case, we're probably running this three to four months out of the year. So I clean it once a year. I clean it in the beginning beginning to middle of uh, June and you know after the first real pollen snap and then I wait and do do that every year and uh, it works out perfectly fine and this thing is a uh, 1999 and it's still kicking actually we turn it right back on and she should start right up and there you go that is the best maintenance thing that you as a homeowner can do it will like, substantially increase the longevity of your air conditioning and uh, save a hell of a lot on service calls. So, um, in the description will be the type of acid that I used and a part number if I could find one. And uh, that's it. Questions, concerns, or anything down in the comments. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you on the next one.